I took some calls from the folks on my radio show this morning. Even after everything that's happened to us, I'm still getting calls from folks who say, we need to do this, or the government needs to do that. Some even suggest the GOP should do something, even after years of surrender and accommodation. One of my favorites is, we need to get Trump back in there and he'll fix everything. Those of you who have watched or listened to me for a long period of time for years know that there's only one thing that can reverse the downward trajectory that our country is on. We the people, America's last hope. That's my focus in today's preamble. Ronald Reagan didn't think much of trust me government. He knew and understood that a government that governs least governs best. Right now we have a government that confiscates our wealth and uses that wealth for its own purposes, not to benefit our own people. The 535 individuals in that Congress have allowed our federal government to balloon into a leviathan that now has the power to enslave us all. Lazy legislators, yeah, a lot of them, both parties keep feeding that beast. And that beast gets more powerful and more unaccountable and more dangerous every single day. According to estimates, there are roughly 3 million people working for the federal government, easily making it the biggest employer in the United States. But unlike other employers, the federal government produces nothing but heartache. It merely sucks financial resources out of our pocket. We pay a DHS to secure our border. They don't. We pay a U.S. military to promote unit cohesion and lethality. They don't. We pay a DOJ and FBI to dispense equal justice. They really don't do that. In other words, Americans are fleeced of trillions of dollars to fund a government that doesn't do its job and shows no signs of changing course. But our taxes go to fund other countries, too. Since Joe Biden has been in office, the United States taxpayers have been forced by our elected officials uh, to send billions of dollars overseas. In 2021, the last year of really Trump influence, Joe Biden's regime in the Congress sent 49 billion of your dollars overseas. In 2022, Joe Biden, the Republicans and Democrats increased that to $69 billion. And in 2023, they sent 62 billion of your hard-earned dollars to other countries. Excluding 2020, the year the China virus struck, all of us with a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, it's easy to see that your government, Joe Biden, Democrats and Republicans, colluded to keep the massive overspending from the China virus going long after the pandemic was in the rearview mirror. In 2021, our deficit was $2.7 trillion, meaning our irresponsible, childish, and feckless government overspent by nearly $3 trillion, money we don't have. In 2022, leading to the midterms, your government eh, slightly dialed that back, the massive overspending only adding $1.38 to your great-grandkids' debt. But after the unit party got back into power, the GOP and the leftists joined hands to crank up the overspending again in 2023 to the tune of $1.7 trillion of overspending. As we detailed above, despite the federal government's incompetence, politicization, or maybe because of those things, the Uniparty has rubber-stamped massive uncontrolled overspending, providing little to no oversight of myriad abuses against the American people, from FISA to religious bigotry abuses of the FBI to the spread of the DIE program to the unconstitutional clampdown on Catholics and pro-life people to looking the other way as violence broke out against pro-life women's clinics. Despite government's abuses, both the GOP and Democrats gave our abusers our money anyway. You know, our elected officials are just too busy to protect us. It hasn't always been like this. Back when the federal courts ruled that America's schools would be integrated, our federal government took action. Under Republican Dwight D. Eisenhower, the government went to work defeating the specter of institutionalized hate ushered into America by the left wing. That was then. This is now. Today, under the Biden regime and a timid GOP video like this, Jewish student was blockaded by anti-Israeli protesters from entering campus at Yale University last night. They formed a, a, a human chain. They prevented the young man from entering. Then there was this demonstration of the cult-like left trying to drive away students who were documenting left-wing hate at Columbia University. We are going to slowly... You see how hostile this is? And you're asking me not to record? Hostile. Walk and take a step forward. Yeah, I absolutely feel threatened right now. So that we can, so that we can start to push them, start to push them out of the camp.